Happy hump day, you beautiful bitch. You, how's it going? How you doing? Now, this week, I did nothing but be the mommy dearest of the world, okay? We'll talk a little bit about it. Oh, and my sale is coming, finally. Okay, let's get into it. We got a lot to discuss. Hello, world. Come inside. The Dear Juju Podcast. Okay, first, this week, I really didn't have much going on. I was just a mom. I pumpkin carved. I pumpkin patched. Met up, had play dates. Like, we did all the things. But I will say, my son started giving me some pre-smelling teenage sass that I was like, you know, really don't believe in smacking children. But <laughs> there is there is a of me I was like hey, you know what he said you're not the boss of me I'm the boss of me you can't tell me what to do and I thought like, oh my god I literally in my head thought of when Homer Simpson <laughs> jokes Bart Simpson and I've been doing this new thing I've been tapping myself because when I feel all the fires of my inner child just start to flare I just start tapping myself because I'm like okay Jooch, hold on to yourself hold on he doesn't know what he's saying. He's trying to get all bossy. Oh, oh, and we went and saw a nightmare before Christmas. And then they got to dance at the front with all their friends. Like, I mommed it up. I was mommy of the year. I took him to Target, got stuff for the little girl's birthday, got stuff for him. You know, I mean, it's a thankless job. I got, you're not the boss of me. And then my daughter said, I wish we had Mela's mommy, which is their next door neighbor friend. And I'm just like, thank God. I'm conscious parent, not not a pushover parent, but a conscious parent. And sometimes I think that gets confused because a lot of people think that conscious parenting is, oh, really, sweetie, do you? And that's not what happens here, okay? This is what conscious means to me, that I'm not pulling over the car and smacking the absolute shit out of both of you. That's conscious parenting. I'm still going, oh, really? Do not speak to me that way. We don't talk to each other in this house like that. Do you understand me? I'm very firm and I'm very clear about where the boundaries are. It is no, hey, baby, 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 baby. Sometimes it is when I know they're just like flipping their lid and they're talking crazy. But sometimes when they're trying me on real boundaries and it's not that I, I will tell you what the car pullover is also a really good move. OK, because you you kind of driving and if it's safe and you know it's safe, clearly honey, you pull that car over, you put it in park, you take a deep breath and then you look at you turn around and you point that finger and you say, do not speak to me like that. In this house, we treat each other with respect. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it, but you do have to respect it. And then they, they're like this. Whoa. You know, kind and firm. I didn't hit. I didn't yell. I didn't scream, but I was firm in that tone. This is what we are doing. I am large and in charge. Got it? It's just a thankless job. And then, of course, the industry has been a fart in a bathtub, and I finally get a job from these directors that made, what's the film? What's the film? What's the film? Yep, the directors of Little Miss Sunshine called me to do a really fun commercial 1980s dancing spot on the day of my daughter's birthday. The only job that's come in since May because the industry has taken such a hard hit and it's with these huge directors. It's this huge campaign. And of course, I have to go because I'm a mom, right? Dad can take all the jobs and all the days and miss all the birthdays and miss all the night times and miss all the cuddles and miss it and miss it. But when you're a mom, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying this is the way it is. And you know what? I saw Kate Winslet, who has a new movie out, and they said, how come this took so long? And she's like, well, because if you're a mother who decides to have children, other priorities take, they take, they take it instead of the career. And I guess we're not making enough to like employ a full-time nanny or want our kids to be raised by a full-time nanny, which is also our choice. I understand that this is also our choice, but it is annoying that it lay, lies on the mom and not the dad. And maybe things will all switch, but right now it doesn't matter. They fall down and get a boo-boo. Who do they call for? 
Mommy. They're scared in the middle of the night. Who do they call for? Mommy. They don't feel good. Who do they want to cuddle them? Mommy. But guess what? When they want to have fun and play, oh, they call their dad. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I actually saw a study that says the serotonin actually releases in their brain when they get cuddled and comforted by their mom and when they have playtime with their dad. That's when the dopamine releases. That's how they respond to bond. And that's, you know, what gives them a sense of security. And you're just like, wait, I get when they're crying, annoyed, scared, this, that, and the other. I got to be there. But then when it's time to have fun... I'm like, I'll throw the baseball with you. Let's go. No, where's dad? It's enough to drive you absolutely insane. But I'm tapping myself. I'm tapping myself. I'm going, it's okay. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Okay? They're, they're children and they are trying you. They're trying you. I'm like, listen, I, if my kids don't want to go to school, I'm like, don't go to school today. I don't care. As long as it's under the limit of me getting in trouble, sure, stay home. What do I care? I'm like, I would have loved to have me as a mother. And you know what? I think that's all I can take refuge in. Me, in all my roles, I am proud of myself, right? Like as a wife, I think I'm a great wife. I'd be chefing it up. He's on the carnivore diet, you know, serving up heart attacks right now, but losing crazy amounts of weight. So it's not really because we're kind of on two different eating schedules. So right now what's being cooked in the house is the kids are having their stand in on the hill of chicken nuggets and pizza and pasta, whatever, shut them up. I put in an avocado. You have to have an avocado. That's all I care about. You can have rice and chicken. It's fine. Then I'm on a diet of chicken, fish, salads, soups. And then my husband's on a carnivore diet of these sausages that, you know, get you excited. They're so big. Steaks, chicken. Like, we're cooking up three meals at each point. It's crazy here. But as a wife, I think I'm pretty proud of myself, you know. I give it up. I'm fun. I don't nag him about too much. As a mother, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm like, I think I'm cool. I am firm, I'm strong, I'm confident, I'm fun. So you know what, I think I'm doing a good job. I am not looking for validation from you twats. <laughs> I like the mother that I am. The dichotomies of motherhood, it's a lot. It's an extreme sport and you sign up for it. So I'm getting what I signed up for. But sometimes you sign up for something and you go, oh. <laughs> Does anybody else know how fucked up this is? Thank God they make them so cute. I'll tell you that. Now, moving on to more fun things. You know, sometimes you just got to vent, you know, and I feel you. And sometimes everyone's like, motherhood is a blessing. And it is. And it's one I signed up for. And I'm so grateful. I literally, when I was pregnant, would pull over to the side of the road, puke morning sickness while crying. I'm so happy to be pregnant. Oh, my God. I'm really pregnant. This is so exciting. Like, oh, God. I guess that's when it starts. That's when you're like, whoa, that roller coaster of emotions doesn't ever quit. You got to learn, okay, in this life because the roller coaster of life, the roller coaster of motherhood, you got to learn to hold on to yourself. You know, you got to learn to be the observer. You got to learn to look out and go, I'm not attaching to any of this because all that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I'm going in and I'm having a party. T T T. Hi. Juju, party of one. I'll sit at the bar. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So that's all I got to say about that. Now, moving on to more fun things like glamour mother freaking gowns. Okay. You know your inner glamour puss? Well, I'm here to tickle it, baby. I have been working on my website. We've been doing photo shoots. We've been photoshopping. We've been getting it all ready. We are going live Friday. Hold on. Let me do a drum roll. Friday, November 8th, noon Pacific Standard Time at lunchtime. I'm going to have a cocktail. I'm going to show you about my dresses. I need to work on getting that model booked. But that's when the site will go live. That's when it will be ready to shop. And I'm going to break down every gown, what the stitching is, the tailoring, the this, the that, the material, how it fits, the flow, where to, where to wear this glamour gown to. So this is what I want you to think about though. I am leaving for London somewhere end of November, beginning of December, something like that. It's up in the air because you know the movie business can always scramble and hurry up and wait as they say. And so it's somewhere around there. I want you to think about holiday 
spring break and the upcoming summer 2025. If you're planning any kind of big weddings that are coming up, any events that are coming up, this will be the time to get your glamour gowns. They're only going to go on sale once and it's this weekend because I'm really trying to push everyone who wants a glamour gown to get it this weekend. We're going to offer free shipping. We're going to offer a discount and we're going to get them out. Because after that, I'm going to London. And if you order, which they will be available, my mom's going to have to ship it. Like we we real down home business. Okay. But the sewing and the tailoring of these gowns is absolutely impeccable. So where there's quality is where it needs to be. But then we, we a little, you know, down home when it comes to running this business. So that weekend will be the weekend to get the Glamour gowns. And it's crazy because when I was doing the photo shoot and when I was doing the video and when I was dancing and all of them, I put them on and it's an instant tits up moment. Like your nipples automatically get hard. Your puss starts to vibrate a little bit. Your asshole starts to get a little, I guess like sphincter starts to tighten. You just feel a certain way in them. You get them on and you're like, oh, and you're like, okay, I'm cute. I am cute. And then I'm like, okay, maybe it's just this one. And then you put on the next one. Oh shit, I'm cute in this one. I'm cute. This one. Every single one. It's a guaranteed. You will feel fabulous and you will tickle your inner glamour puss. Okay. You will feel the magic down in your glamour puss. I promise. So we're going to do all that on a live. It's going to be so fun. I'm going to pin it to my Instagram board and I'm going to have a model trying them on so I can talk about it, so I can answer any questions. And once I get pinned that whole weekend, I'm going to allow for sales. And some of these are one of one, two of two, four, four, five, five, six, seven. I have 35 caftans. I've had 60 plus inquiries. Inqui inquiries. How the hell do you say that word? Inquiries. Why is that a hard word for me? I'm not sure. About them and saying, I want this one, I want this one. I'm like, yo, there's only two of those. Once I go live, the site will also go live and it's first come, first serve. You go, you pay, you check out. That's it. That's what we got. What we got's what we got. So I'm really excited and looking forward to that. And I think it's going to be fun to see you guys and for you guys to see the gowns on someone also, also other than me. And I think I'm going to get someone that's around 5'6". So you can also see the V neckline hits them, where the hemline hits them, where the arms hit them. That way you can see one on me that's 5'2". You can see someone who's 5'6", and then you can kind of make the according adjustments in your head to where you are. So these are one size fits most, and I had to go with like an average height. And believe this, the average height of the women here on this earth is 5'4". November 8th, mark your calendars. We're going to have a good time. Guaranteed good time. Okay, last but not least, a little shopping tip. Do you love my jacket? Isn't it so fabulous? If you're listening, then go look on a YouTube. My jacket is fabuloso, and so are my earrings. Now, they are both from, you know, you guessed it, Recess, my favorite store in Los Angeles. They went to Rhode Island to some manufacturer and bought all these brand name vintage dead stock jewelry. Here's the really good thing about buying vintage jewelry. You can wear new and blazers and be all 90s chic and wear modern clothes and still make a crazy statement with vintage jewelry. And it's really cheap to ship. The good thing about jewelry too, you could be any size, right? It doesn't matter if you're a little thicker, if you're a little thinner than you normally are or whatever, you can still throw on an earring and look fabulous. And let me tell you, to make your glamour puss complete, you have to have a statement earring. They're at Recess LA on Instagram. All right, and with all that, let's get into some domestic goddess Cooking. I mean, what else is there to do but make pumpkin chocolate chip cookies? You know, if you're not really into the pies and the this and the other, I mean, a cookie is the best with like a cup of coffee. You do a little dunk. And I have the recipe for the best pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Here's my favorite part of this recipe. Combine everything into a bowl. Thank you. Don't have me whipping egg whites and da 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 when I got two screaming kids. Like, that's just not going to work right now. These are the pumpkin chocolate chip pancakes. A friend of a friend of a friend gave this to me. And supposedly, it's been passed along. It's been written about. It's been blogged about. And I'm here to pass it on to you. One and a half cups pureed pumpkin. We use canned. 
two cups flour, one teaspoon cinnamon. Now, here you could also do pumpkin pie spice, which is nutmeg and ground ginger as well. One teaspoon vanilla, teaspoon baking powder, teaspoon baking soda, quarter teaspoon salt. I liked, I just eyeball that salt because I like mine salty because the salty with the sweet to me it tastes really good. Half a cup sugar, half a cup unsalted butter, softens, you know how it does, room temperature while you're vacuuming or doing something and then pop it. And then a cup to a cup and a half of chocolate chips. Who's using a cup, let's be honest. So you combine everything into the bowl but the chocolate chips. Then when that's mixed well, add them. Bake for about 12 to 14 minutes at 350. You're gonna go, no, Those. that's so easy. That's so easy, that's so delicious. Your kids are gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Make you some pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. They are the bomb. It's perfect. The spice, the color, the chocolate chip, everything just goes so well together and it's so easy. And the best part about it is when your kids come home or when people come home, your whole house smells like chocolate chip cookies. This is why they do this during, you know, sales of homes is because it just tingles your funny bone for nostalgia and for home and for warmth and for holidays. Okay, just do it and put all that shit in a bowl and make it. Cocktails, you know right now I'm drinking a classic Manhattan. A Manhattan for me is the Falls Martini, if you will. It's bourbon, it's vermouth, it's Angostura bitter. What do you hear? Alcohol, 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 that shit is strong. Then it's got a maraschino cherry, shaken, poured in a beautiful coupe. Oh, and bourbon for me gives me such a fun, I'm a fun time on bourbon. You know, bourbon, I start to get loud. I start to have fun. I start to feel good. So don't forget about the classics. Chocolate chip cookie with pumpkin and a classic Manhattan. We are keeping it classy today. That's all you want. Decor. Now this isn't really decor as much as it is a call to action, a CTA. Carve you a fucking pumpkin. I don't care if it's just you and your husband, your kids are grown, whatever. We had the most fun carving the pumpkins. And hello, doing that with like a carving and like sketching it out and then actually doing it with your hands and throwing away the gunk, artistically doing the face and making it just right, setting it on your front porch when it got dark that night, we put a TiVo candle in it, we turned it on, we put the hat on, and I said, well, that was fun. I wasn't gonna do it this year. My next door neighbor actually pushed me to do it. She said, you have to carve a pumpkin. That's the most fun thing to do with little kids. I said, I'm not doing it. It's too, we got too much going on. I have a caftan sale. I have an estate sale. I'm moving my whole life. I'm not gonna sit here and punch out some pumpkin triangle eyes and nose. Nope. She was like, well, then I am. 12.30, does that work for you? Well, then of course I couldn't just leave my kids over there with a bunch of knives and just my neighbor. So I went over as well. Then my three-year-old, of course, couldn't do it. So I did hers and let me tell you, I had the best time. <laughs> I was like, damn it, don't get me to do it. There's something so therapeutic. I love rhinestoning, sewing, making jewelry, carving pumpkins, anything that has to do with very detailed fine motor skills that is a creative process, it almost sends me into a meditative state because the only thing that you can focus on is right there what's in front of you and you're just doing it. And it's non-technological. You know, that's a technical term, by the way. It's, it has nothing to do with technology. It has to do with your hands, a knife, some carving. We were playing music. It was a beautiful day here in Southern California. So decor. Carve your ass a pumpkin, okay? This domestic goddessness has been brought to you by the classics. Pumpkin chocolate chip cookies, a classic Manhattan, and for decor, just do it. You're gonna go, I don't want to, I don't want to, Juju, I don't want to, no one. And then you are at Trader Joe's or at Target. We got ours at Target, this freaking big, huge, for $4.99. I was like, what? Oh, I'm coming at Target every year. Or you're at Trader Joe's and you see one and it calls to you and you go, damn it, Jooch. She's in my ear. Let me carve a damn pumpkin. And you put on some music and you pour yourself a Manhattan and you carve a pumpkin and you just go, well, shit, that was a good time. This is why I listen to Dear Juju because she gets me out of whatever I'm doing and she promotes having a good time with your life, okay? That's my decor advice. All right, with that, let's get into some Q&A with some... 
Okay, here we go. Dear Juju, I love all of your fashion and how you make every day feel so fabulous. Oh, thank you. How do I mix and match outfits when my idea of being versatile is just wearing sweatpants? Please help my inner glamour queen shine. You guys, I'm not going to lie. Sweats these days have come such a long way. You know what's funny? Look at me, okay? See this right here? This sweatpants. I got sweats on now. Now, these black sweats with this coat, if I went anywhere and then I threw on a boot, like a uh, shiny patent leather boot, no one be looking at them sweats. I think <sighs> whether you love her, whether you hate her, Kim Kardashian has definitely gone more into the fashion realm, being with all the fashion houses, Balenciaga, cover of Vogue, the whole situation. And she's turned sweats into kind of a hot mom look, okay? She has, because fashion designers have been behind her, have been styling her. So I think what you have to do is either show skin or show glam in your top. So you can wear sweats, but you have to put boots with it. You have to put a fabulous coat with it. You have to have your makeup on. You have to have your hair nice and you have to have jewelry on. Basically, you can switch your sweats for your jeans or your pants if the glamour is everywhere else. It's kind of like smoke and mirrors. Like, look over here, look, look over here, look at this fur, look at these earrings. I'm also wearing sweats, don't fucking tell. But the hair's nice, the makeup's on, you look fresh, you look put together. It just, no matter what, you have to dress thoughtfully. It's when you're dressed like a slob and your hair's greasy and you, you got your zits out and you have no jewelry on and you're wearing these ugly flip-flops and you haven't got a pedicure. That's when sweats have a bad name. But I really think that people are doing sweats very tailored, very cool, and very stylish these days. Can you believe I'm saying this? But I am. Because I am a woman of comfort at times. And I will still be in a fur coat be in, you know, crazy earrings that are vintage from France. I'll still have my beat together. But yeah, I got a sweatpant on. I don't care. It might be that time of the month, you know? Don't judge me. There is a time and a place for sweats. Yesterday when I went to the movies with my kids, it was at the movies down the street. Actually, the claymation head animator for A Nightmare Before Christmas actually came. It was really fun. And he did a talk and it was I knew it was going to be a kid event. So yeah. I made my sweats cute. I wore sweats, I wore boots, I wore a cute jean jacket, put my hair up, put a lip on, put a little earring on, you know. Then at least it looks pulled together. But I'm like, I ain't seeing anyone but my kids' school friends, y'all getting sweats. And it's Sunday, I'm tired, my throat hurts when I swallow, this is what it is. But there's still ways of making it look cute. And how you make it look cute is glamour everywhere else. Dear Juju, I want to have a friend's giving, but is there a polite way to ask guests to bring their own food so I can avoid cooking all together? The holidays are stressful enough and cooking for all my friends sounds awful. How do you think I should word this? Um, it's called a potluck. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> I love you, girl, but were you born yesterday? Have a Friendsgiving, say that you're hosting it, and if you don't like to cook, say that you're providing the wine. Like, is there something that you can do? Say you're providing the ambiance, the decorations, and the wine or the cocktails. Can can there be some, I mean, a bottle of wine, all you have to do is go to your local wine shop and say, I wanna spend 100 bucks, give me like four bottles of wine that makes me look cool. Like, easy peasy. Yeah, but it's called a potluck. Let's have a Friendsgiving potluck. Everyone pick a dish that you want to bring. And then you can order like mashed potatoes if you want. You can, if you yours and you say, I'm bringing the wine, you guys decide what you want to bring and let's all come together. Don't make it more complicated. With this PC politically correct world, sometimes it goes too far. A potluck is very much like bring a dish, bitch, okay? And it's totally socially acceptable. And then it's really fun for people to do. Like maybe they have a signature dish from their family. Then they can share the story where they got the recipe. And then you can go around the table and it'll give you something to talk about as well. What did you bring? Oh, I bought green bean casserole. Now, why green bean casserole? Is that something you loved as a kid? Is there a spot? Well, when I was four, whatever. You know, then everyone can kind of talk and say the dish that they brought. Great conversation piece 
and then you don't want to work on cook anything. But you're gonna you're gonna have to clean up. But you know what's great is that hopefully everyone will wash their own dish and take it freaking home, so it'll be less than normal. <laughs> Dear Juju, I want to be a domestic goddess with cocktails and cooking, but what is the best way for me having a fancy cocktail when my mixology skills involve only pouring wine into a glass? Please help. Pouring wine into a glass is absolutely okay. You know, and let me tell you, practice makes perfect. And where I like to start is with the simple, a spritz. Like an Amaro spritz for me for fall is the go-to. So you pour Amaro, then you pour Prosecco, and then you pour sparkling water. And guess what? You're not even supposed to mix it. And then you put in the straw. Then they're supposed to mix it up, okay? I think people get so afraid of cocktails because they're like, there's too many ingredients. I don't have the right mixing thing. I don't know if I'm gonna do it right. Just do what you like. Do what's easy. Better done than perfect, you know? And let me tell you, spritzes get the job done. Okay. And then you'll go, oh, that was easy and that was delicious. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. You don't need to be a mixologist to make a great cocktail. I believe in you. All right, that's the podcast. You know, Halloween is coming up. I'm about to get my candy on. I've been losing weight. I've been feeling great, but what I'm I'm going to eat some of my kids candy. That's for damn sure. You know what it is for me? Pink Starburst. I could I could probably pound 50 of those. I love Pink Starburst. The chocolate and this that and the other because it feels very fake nowadays. I don't actually like the way it tastes, but then Pink Starburst, what you want to talk about fake? What the hell even is that? I don't know but it gets all my sensory overload. So enjoy your Halloween, enjoy your time, carve yourself a pumpkin. Don't forget that you're a star, okay? You're a star, you're made out of the stuff of the universe, whatever's going on in front of you. Just go, oh, well that's interesting. I'm not gonna take that on, I'm gonna leave that out there and just look at it. <laughs> Try to be the observer of this crazy life. I love you, I'm out, I'll see you next week. Mwah!